I grew up in Ohio, the home state of those aviation pioneers, the Wright brothers. And today is the anniversary of their historic flight near Kitty Hawk, North Carolina, a location chosen, at least in part, because of its weather. Indeed, both states lay claim to the Wright brothers, North Carolina license plates boasting first in flight, while the Buckeye state advertises on its license plate as the birthplace of aviation. The mechanically oriented Wright brothers grew up in Dayton, where they owned a bicycle shop. But they'd always been interested in flying machines, and they spent their spare time tinkering with different types of wings and designing gliders to test their ideas about flight. By 1900, they were looking for a place to try some serious gliding experiments, so they consulted with an aviation pioneer of the time, Octave Chanute, who advised them to choose an open location with steady winds and a safe, sandy landing surface. The Wright brothers wrote to the U.S. Weather Bureau looking for data to help them find a site. And one of the offices they contacted was at Kitty Hawk, about 50 miles north of Cape Hatteras, on the Outer Banks, where weather data had been collected since 1875. The only employee there, a Mr. J.J. Dosher, wrote back in the summer of 1900 with good news. The area was virtually uninhabited with a wide beach, clear of trees, and steady breezes in the fall. Within two months, the Wright brothers were testing their gliders at Kitty Hawk. After two more visits there in 1901 and 1902 and other experiments in a homemade wind tunnel, they were ready for the next step. In late 1903, they returned to the Outer Banks and assembled their new 700-pound engine-powered Wright Flyer. Their first try at powered flight was actually on December 14th, but the plane stalled, crashed, and sustained minor damage. They tried again three days later, on December 17th, just after 10.30 a.m., a chilly morning in the eastern U.S. with winds gusting above 25 miles per hour and temperatures in the 30s in the Carolinas. Orville was the pilot for that historic flight, with Wilbur running alongside, the plane only about 10 feet above the ground, covering 120 feet in 12 seconds into a stiff northeast wind. The brothers made three more flights that day, the final one lasting almost a minute, proving conclusively that sustained, controlled, powered flight was possible. Today, the restored 1903 Wright Flyer hangs in the Smithsonian Air and Space Museum in Washington, D.C. Many of the Wright's other artifacts, including their collection of airfoils, were donated to the Franklin Institute in Philadelphia, the first scientific organization to credit the brothers for achieving sustained powered flight. In fact, Orville Wright and Amelia Earhart were on hand for the grand opening of the Institute's Aviation Hall in 1933. Fred will be back with the extended forecast next.